Nim Malware, is it the new sheriff in town? So Andy, what can you tell us about the Nim Malware? So it's not so much a story as it is uh, some research being done on Nim Malware. It, uh, it caught my eye because I had actually never heard of the NIM programming language up until a few days ago when I was reading the story. Uh, it's interesting. So the researcher wrote to medium.com um, basically his, his findings on where NIM malware is and how it's being used. And so NIM, it's a programming language. It's a compiled systems programming language. It's, it looks a lot like Python. It's a little bit different. Um, like the way it handles identifiers, it's case insensitive. So if you look at their, like the NIM website, there's, they have like a hello, like a print hello world function um, statement, but the, you can do it six different ways and it, it's all valid. And it's, it's weird. Like sometimes there's parentheses, sometimes there isn't. Sometimes the, the quotation is around print and not hello world. It's kind of strange. Hmm. It's pretty weird. Um, but Nonetheless, it is a programming language that's being used more and more uh, for malware. And, you know, he just, he goes through and he details his findings with NIM loaders, uh, cryptors. Um, I think he, there's some stagers. TrickBot was using it uh, as a loader. Um, just kind of a bunch of different things that, that NIM is being used for. But it was interesting because it's kind of a, a trend that we're seeing overall with malware, it, you know, Malware authors are, are not moving away from, I guess they kind of are, moving away from C and C++ and going more into newer languages like NIM and Go. Um, in recent years, Go has just exploded in terms of how, many, how much malware is out there that's been written in Go. And um, I think ZDNet put out an article a little while ago that said in the past couple of years, Go malware has, has increased 2,000%, which is insane. Uh -huh. So... You know, when you ask yourself, like, well, why? Why, why are we seeing NIM and Go and probably a, a, some other more obscure languages being used for malware? And I think the answer is, is its flexibility. So one of the reasons why Go, partly, one of the reasons why Go is being used to write malware a lot is because you can compile the, the, your binary into any operating system that you want from the same code base. Mm -hmm. So I can be sitting here at my Windows machine and I've got, you know, a web shell written in Go. And I could say, you know, uh, let's compile one for Linux. Easy. And it's just, it's, it's, it's really easy. It's just go, there's like an environment variable that you can set. And it just, you know, that's how, that's how it's set. So I was, uh, I was reading a little bit about NIM because I was interested in it. And I found that NIM can do the same thing. You can actually just compile it into any operating system you want. So I think it's a lot of it is it's the flexibility of, of using one code base to compile binaries for, you know, a bunch of different operating systems. But it's also the, I would say, lack of expertise overall in the security industry, of, of, in the, the blue team industry, um, of how to defend against it. So, you know, Go malware is relatively new. You know, Go came out in 2009, I think. NIM came out in 2008. So these are relatively new languages. And, you know, antivirus detections are just not that great for them yet. Uh, you know, signature-based detections, again, are just not that great for them yet, in part because they're still kind of new, and in part because uh, reverse engineering Go malware is still kind of hard, you know, and the same thing goes for NIM. It's just, it compiles, diff it decompiles differently, and, um, you know, security researchers are just not there yet in terms of their skill set in, de in, you know, de decrypting these things or decompiling these things. So I, I don't know. I thought it was interesting. It was an interesting story because we are seeing that trend uh, with malware, and you know, add NIM to the list of programming languages that are are now going to be producing malware. So that's fun. What are your thoughts? To your point, you know, evolution of malware, right? Like even when you mentioned, like you know, how like trick part, and you know, so many malware that you know we already know that have been slightly tweaked, slightly modified. You can buy them off, you know, the black market, and you know, engage with it. And we have, you know, the sort of the blue team constantly trying to play defense and we're struggling, right? Because you're short on resources, we have to innovate, you know, research is not yet there, funding is not there. You know, how I talk to a lot of, you know, SOC teams and if you really ask them how much time do you actually spend actively threat hunting, 
and really reverse engineering malware versus triaging a phishing attempt and trying to do some of the basic you know functions that are happening you know the irony is most teams are struggling right we are sort of low on staff you know not even if you're interested and have the skill set you may not have the bandwidth right so with in languages like this i feel like the sort of the bad guys have a leg up right because it's an easier you know way of being able to you know now you don't even have to do the work to compile in different operating system it's being done for you whereas on the other hand you know for the blue team and even when i saw this article about how red teams are starting to use this right and you're you know you're really thinking you know on the defense side we don't have you know too much going for us then it sort of paints a little bit of the the pessimistic picture right so you know it, it sort of worries me <laughs> to think that you know this is where, you know since 2008 2009 and you know you know a decade later we seem to still you know not have the ability and we're still you know so many of us are still using antivirus that are signature based right and we are uh, you know, sort of fighting an uphill battle if you will Well, I think it's also notable that it has been around for slightly longer than Go, but this is the first I've heard of anyone actually using it. So I guess that's kind of better. I mean, like you said, we we are resource constrained in def- defense. We have to pick and choose our battles. And the fact that no one's developed extensive defenses against NIM is probably due to the fact that no one has really been using NIM un- un- until recently. Um but you know we've got a pretty good way of detecting malware that's compiled for many other languages you know the same way that you know for a long time people would advertise you know not advertise the max but like if somebody would talk about their max as not having viruses it's not strictly true just that the main population that was being targeted by malware was the largest population uh which was people using windows whatever makes it most profitable that's where i think that the trend seems to shift so This is all interconnected, you know. Certainly. With each shift, you have to keep adjusting that. That's just the basics of of how defense and offense work these days, you know. Constantly shifting to try and find things that one side hasn't thought of yet. Yeah. Um, yeah. The supply and demand life cycle of malware. <laughs> yeah, not yeah. very very much so, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, how long how long is it going to take to reach an equilibrium then with, you know, like we have with C and C++? Uh-huh. Kind of. We'll see. We'll see. I mean, I will say that both of these languages, though they came out a little over 10 years ago, like the first bit of Go malware that some anyone saw was in 2012. And, and you know, so since then, since 2012 till say 2020, 2019, which is when Go malware really started picking up. You know, there wasn't a ton there. So there's a good period of time where you know, it wasn't it's not like Go from the onset has just been used for malware. It's a great language. you know there's a lot of a lot of you know good networking built into it and i think that's part of the reason why it's being used for go but or for malware sorry um but you know we blue teamers just got to stay vigilant